Howdy doody buckaroonies, and good morning. It is Wednesday, my dudes, and it is time for a studio tour update video vlog thing. After many years of working out of things like my grandparents' basement, a one-bedroom apartment, spare bedrooms, and places we've rented over the years, I am very glad to now have a proper home studio environment. It was a pretty big investment, and it's still a work in progress as a studio always is, but I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I, I think it's pretty cool. Most of these products will be linked down in the description below where applicable. A few things I honestly don't know what they are or where I got them, so you might have to do a bit of hunting, but I'll try my best to link everything down below if you want to grab some of this stuff for yourself. First up, let's talk about gear, I guess. Let's start with all the cool stuff on the shelf back here behind me. First up, my handy dandy Waldorf Blofeld. I always wanted a Blofeld and I finally broke down and got one because I got it for a pretty good price. It's not something I use all that much for my day-to-day -day work doing sound design and whatnot, but it is something I really enjoy using in my own music and something I just honestly enjoy sitting down and playing with. Next up, the Novation Peak. This is probably the best money I've ever spent on a synthesizer. That thing has paid for itself many times over by now. This is still my primary workstation synth for most of my sound design work. Next up, the Modal Cobalt 8 and Argon 8. These are two really fun and fast synthesizers. I was a little bit stuck on on the Argon 8 when I first got it because it felt maybe a little bit underpowered and I don't use it all that much because I already have a couple other wavetable synths but I do pull it out every once in a while for the unique oscillator modes and ways you can start to play and mangle things. The Cobalt I find myself using quite a bit because it's a really really good sounding virtual analog synth and it has the modal app plugin making it something I tend to have on my desk usually and leave it plugged into my computer where I can run it as a plugin in my session or use it as a piece of hardware. The Micro Freak is a very interesting synthesizer with a lot of different modes, and honestly, it's a really good tool for sound design. With all the different oscillator algorithms and ways you can shape and destroy things with it, it's pretty fun to explore, and I find myself using it quite a bit for some more off-the-wall sounds, I guess hence the freak in the name. The Polyant Tracker is a very unique device that I never thought I would see during my lifetime. It's actually a hardware tracker. In my case, the tracker sits around more as a glorified 8-track MIDI generative tool, but it is a lot of fun to explore, and I do use it quite a bit just to start messing with ideas and coming up with loop ideas and things like that. I do use it quite a bit doing drum loop creation as well because I'll import some samples from my sessions onto it and then run it through the generative features of the tracker and let it spit out a couple of variations of a loop that I can then chop up and manipulate further in the DAW. Chugalugan right along to the workstation here, let's talk about MIDI controllers. So lately, I've actually just been using my Arturia Keystep Pro. The Keystep Pro is a really solid MIDI controller. It fits really nicely on my desk, so it's a good candidate for doing a lot of the work that I do because most of the time, I'm not doing big piano or string sections. I'm usually just sitting there plucking one note or a couple of notes across a few octaves over and over, designing some sounds and stuff. So that's a really good solution to that. For my primary MPE controller, I use the Sensel Morph. The Morph has a couple of different overlays as well, making it a very practical controller because I can swap out the different overlays when I'm doing different things. Back in this dark, dingy corner, rarely seen on the internet, is my microphone cabinet over here. This is where all my microphones, as well as cables, adapters, connectors, and things like that go. And way back there, uh, all those are are my guitars, which I don't know that I've really shown or talked about on this channel very much. My primary microphone I've been using these days is the new Rycote HC22 shotgun microphone. Because it's a shotgun microphone and has a very tight polar pattern, it's really good for recording close, intimate, and very detailed sounds of instruments or whatever it is I might be recording for sound design sessions. And because it's sitting over here ready to go at all times for YouTube videos, it's just very convenient to pull it over and use for most of my recording sessions as well. My other primary microphone is the Lewitt 440 Pure. This is a large diaphragm condenser that sounds absolutely beautiful. The other microphones worth mentioning would be my Deity S Mic 2. This is my primary field recording microphone. The other microphones I use all the time that are in my sound design bag are my Lewitt 040 small diaphragm condenser matched pair, and I have the Lewitt stereo bar as well. So what about them stringy guitar boys back there? They're not really that interesting, but I guess we'll go over a couple of my favorites very quickly. First up, my main electric guitar is a 
custom Telecaster inspired guitar from Indie Custom Guitars. I don't even know if this brand exists anymore, but it's a really cool guitar. It served me very well for many years now. I've been on a lot of tours, a lot of miles, and a lot of recordings over however many years I've had it. Acoustic guitar wise, I have a Morgan Monroe Dreadnought acoustic guitar. This is probably my favorite guitar I've ever owned. My last guitar worth talking about is a Gibson LG Zero named Stella. I got this guitar for $80 when I worked at Guitar Center in Peoria, Illinois, because this guy came in after a family member, I think maybe his dad or his grandpa had passed away, and he found this in the attic. It was completely caved in, the guitar top had been smashed, by someone kicking it or a box sitting on it or God knows what and he was trying to sell it but we couldn't take it in because obviously it was destroyed and pretty much worthless. I told the guy I'll give you 50 bucks. He said 100. I said 80. He said deal and I got a 1950 something Gibson. Back over to the workstation with a wider and much cooler vintage lens, let's talk about the blood and guts that this studio runs on. I run everything off a Windows system. It's a custom built computer I made back in 2015 ish, and it still holds up pretty good, even though I do everything in 4K and whatnot now, but it's definitely starting to show its age, and I do really need to upgrade. My audio interface is the Arteria AudioFuse Studio. It is absolutely fantastic. No intention of changing it anytime soon. I've been offered a couple other interfaces by other companies to try out and potentially replace it with, but I just can't see a reason to. My studio monitors I've been using lately are Atom Audio SV2s. These things are by far the most expensive speakers I've ever had in my home studio, and they are unreal sounding. They were loaned to me by Atom Audio to try out for a while. I've had them for a little over a month now, and they make my wallet hurt bad. These things sound incredibly good. The SV2s cost a pretty chunk of change, so if you're in a situation where you're looking to invest that much in some monitoring, obviously highly recommend them. They sound unreal, and pretty much every speaker at that price point is going to sound pretty damn good, but these I can personally vouch for because I actually have them in front of me. It's very rare that I get to hear monitors that cost this much, and I can see why they do. However, if you're looking for some more affordable stuff, a lot of the technology that's implemented in the S series is also implemented in Atom Audio's T series, so check those out if you want something kind of like these, but much more reasonable for the average home studio owner. Finally, closing things off is my computer monitor. That is a Samsung 4K monitor. I believe it's 32 inches, and it's a great monitor. I really like it, but I wish I could maybe get it off of my desk at some point, maybe get a second monitor, I don't know, but the thing is, it's just so massive that if I had two of them, I don't know where I'd reasonably put that and sort that out. So that's something I'm still working on. Moving on, let's talk about all my cool stuff and things, but first, I feel like this shot is oddly dramatic, and if I just turn over this way and start speaking like this, it feels like one of those corporate interviews where I talk about how much my fast food restaurant deeply cares about socioeconomic change. Let's talk acoustic treatment. This room has really thick carpeting. It's kind of ugly and I'm probably going to change it out at some point when we change the carpet and the rest of the house, but it does a really good job soaking up so much of the noise and reflections and stuff up here. In terms of acoustic panels, I have a bunch of acoustic panels I built myself. Those are the ones you see hanging up on the angled ceiling and I've got two more that I placed in these corners to act as big bass traps. The really cool acoustic panels, the ones that are all neat and light up and stuff back there, are for my friends over at Psy Acoustics. These are really cool professional grade acoustic panels that I had custom artwork I designed myself put on, and they've got fun LED lights on the front and back. Having a space that's visually inspiring I think is just as important as having a space that is functional to create in, because being a creative person and being a creator, that's my job, you know, making sample packs and presets and whatever, creating content for YouTube, creating content for other companies and all that kind of stuff, I need a space that makes me want to create. If I walk in here and it's just flat and dead, it's not that fun to be up here and it's not that inspiring and doesn't really get me in that right headspace. Because Psy Acoustics allows you to do custom artwork on your panels, I really wanted to take advantage of this opportunity to re-envision one of my favorite pieces of artwork I've ever seen that I bought at a Goodwill for about $3 about 10 years ago. So when I was approached by Psy Acoustics and I saw that you can do custom artwork, I sat down and designed a kind of bigger version of what that thing sort of looked like. This isn't really at all what it looked like. This is just a spiritual successor to that piece of art with a really grungy handmade X. The one on the original painting looked like really rough duct tape or something and some cool visual symmetric designs that I made that just kind of, I don't know, sum up 
how I envision music, if that makes any sense at all. This is my couch. This is a futon I bought from Walmart years and years ago for our first apartment. It probably cost me around $200 or so. I'm pretty sure you can still find it there. And it's just a very practical piece. It's a great piece of acoustic treatment. It acts as a really big bass trap. It's very comfortable to sit on. So if I'm working long sessions up here, I can kind of chill out over here. If I have someone over, they can chill out up here as well. It's also a futon. So if I'm working super, super late, which happens pretty often, it's also very practical just to lay down and sleep up here if I need to and then wake up and get right back to the grind. Over here we have my synth cabinet, I guess, and then my shelves of stuff and or things. And of course the synth cabinet lights up because you can't be a YouTube person without a bunch of lights everywhere. So boom, boom. And what kind of YouTuber person would I be if they weren't RGB? So we can turn them all sorts of fun colors and look really cool doing it. There's a lot of other miscellaneous things. I've got my cool Edison lamp up there. I've got some vintage recording equipment and an old drum machine that Alicia's dad gave me. And over here on top of this, I've got a bunch of other random stuff. I have my fallout bobblehead. I've got some other miscellaneous things and knickknacks. I have a tape recorder my wife bought me. I've got my Google assistant so I can go, hey Google, tell me a joke. What happens when a frog's car breaks? It gets towed. Ha. Huh. I've also got my metal T-Rex up there that my dad and stepmom bought for me. I really love dinosaurs and that fit in perfectly with this kind of industrial theme I was going for up here, so I really love that thing. And perhaps the coolest thing up there is my custom Fallout painting that my wife's sister made for me for a birthday or a Christmas a couple of years ago. It's absolutely awesome and I really, really love that thing. Other than that, I have some random other little knickknacks down there and my box of stuff and my box of things because that looked a lot better than having a bunch of junk on my floor that I need access to but didn't really know how to store. Over here, not really much to talk about. There's one of my acoustic panels. That's a bass trap that sits over in the corner with a big air gap behind it. This is a bookcase where I store all of my video related equipment, camera lenses, things like that. I've got my DaVinci Resolve controller and some other things that I need access to, my camera gimbal and other odds and ends like that. And I've got some other random vintage cameras and cool stuff over there, as well as Iron Man and a painting that my mom made for me. Over here we have this corner, which is similarly visually uninspiring. There's a bookshelf with some stuff on it, another acoustic panel that acts as a bass trap, and my microphone so I can grab that and set it up for videos. It just sits over there ready to go at all times, and a couple of random things on this shelf that aren't really of much note. There's my sound design go bag and my blimp so I can just pick that up and go when I need to go out and do field recording sessions and whatever. There's a box full of just miscellaneous cables and chargers and other random things I need access to. That just looks better than having a pile of cables sitting on that shelf. And then I've got my lamp and my Volt Boy bobblehead that's gigantic and super cool. And that's really it. I put my headphone box up there as well, just cause it looked a bit nicer, but I do need to figure out a way to make these corners look a little bit more fun. I think I might get some more of those hockey puck lights and stack them in there just to make everything a bit more bright and fun rather than being a corner of just random stuff. Finally, closing things off here back at Star Command, let's talk about my desk and everything else. This is my chair, which is this thing. It is an Amazon generic equivalent to a Herman Miller Aeron, at least as close as I could find, and one that was much more in my price range because Aerons are super nice, but they're extremely expensive, even used. This chair is really great. I do highly recommend it. It looks pretty okay, and most importantly, it doesn't make my back or my ass hurt when I'm up here working for 14 hours a day sitting in it. My desk is a random desk I found on Amazon that looks really, really nice, and I think what's really cool, it has a power strip and a couple USB slots built into it to supply power. So I can plug things directly into my desk, I can plug in my phone to charge it directly into my desk, and all that other good stuff. It's kind of a small thing, but I'm really glad I went for it. It also has a pocket over here for papers and miscellaneous stuff, which is nice when I'm doing, you know, office things where I need a spot to store papers and invoices and contracts and other things I need to have there. On the other side, it's also got some headphone hangers, which is really awesome. That's great to store cables on. I just put both of my headphones on there so I can reach over and grab those whenever I need them. Other than that, on my desk and around the room, I've got a few fake plants. I tried to have real plants up here, but because there's only one window and I really can't leave it open all day, there's not nearly enough light to keep anything alive up here. So that helps bring a bit more of that organic industrial vibe I really wanted to curate for this room. 
The last thing of note here on my desk is my monitor riser stand. This is a bamboo monitor stand I found on Amazon that is extremely handy because it's got little storage compartments and whatnot. So I've got pens and other random things, my Sensil Morph and other stuff in it and cables running through it and all that. It's a really good way just to organize my desk and keep things clean. So that is it. Let's, uh, let's get some light going in here. There we go. Actually, no, let's go with with blue. That'll look way cooler. So yeah, that is it. That is my home studio in its current state as of late 2021. Thank you for stopping by for this episode of MTV Cribs and VH1 Behind the Music. I think it's a pretty cool space and I know there's still a couple things left to do, but like I said, a studio is always a living, breathing, dynamic thing, so I don't think it'll ever really be finished. It'll just keep evolving. I think there's a couple things left to do. I just got to figure out some decorating things and other little bits to wrap things up and, of course, put some kind of small coffee machine up here at some point. So that wraps everything up for this video, I guess. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a little bit different. I don't usually do stuff like this, but I figured it was worth just showing you around now that things have changed quite a bit since the initial version of this studio. So thank you for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something, maybe. And as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome.